hello 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 thank you so much for watching the sashiko live streaming this is atsushi and i will be doing the sashiko live here about Poro today let's, let's see what i can do <clears throat> so i'll talk to the camera like this when I have a question and when I do not have a topic to talk about unless everybody not everybody unless that I kind of can start talking about the borrow I will stitch on this section unfortunately I cannot stitch and if I have to stitch I have to kind of move myself there so it's a little bit difficult but I will stitch a little bit and I will probably can get answer. I mean, I will probably can collect some questions, and then I will start talking about the borrow today. Uh, it's so many cameras here, so I may not be able to <laughs> focus on one thing. But I will start stitching, and when I stitch, I will hide myself because there will be, there will be nothing showing there. And the Japanese live streaming is going to happen within one hour, uh, starting at 11 o'clock in the Japan time. So give me a few days. All right. There we go. Oh, it's quite cold. It's really cold here. So today we're going to talk about Boro, so... And this is the kind of piece that I will be making for the Boro too. Oh, I did not know there was the chat. I have a pair of Levers jeans from the 80s or 90s. They have a small hole in the... Oh, thank you so much. It's for free. Hmm. Does it stink? Does it smell? Um, it's interesting that I really... I receive a lot of... Uh, offer like that, and I really appreciate it. But I do have enough, and my house is not that big enough to keep all of it. So, if it does not stink, I would like to have it, but if it's kind of stinks, please. I mean, it's, it's not really polite to ask that, but... There's a lot of things I can do, and at this moment, I do not... Okay, sounds good. Uh, so if you could... Uh, contact me via the upcycle stitches, I will reply to that. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions about Boro, I don't know if I can answer that, but I cannot promise I will answer that, but sometimes I will try my best to explain that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I, I really appreciate it. We live in a very interesting world right now, so I used to actually say that, please send me like, I, I didn't say anything, but I really needed those denim to try sashiko on the thick denim. So I used to say yes to pretty much everything, but there are, of course, really decent people and really nice people who send me even, like, you know, small notes on that. At the same time, they just send me a bag of trash one day. And, you know, it is okay for me to toss it to the garbage bin, but at the same time it was a little bit strange that they spent like shipping fee to send me the trash. I probably that was not trash for them, but it was very how can I say hazard. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So thank you so much for the questions, not a questions, comments. Um, 
So Sherry, thank you so much for the offer. If you could visit my website at cyclesketches.com and there should be the way to contact me saying contact. <laughs> if, if you search for the article saying contact, you should be able to find a form to contact me and I will remember your name. In fact, I should write it down. And I will make sure to reply to you. Do you ever do Bishamon Kiko? It seems complicated, but I wanted to do it. Bishamon Kiko is not difficult or complicated once you get it. Problem is, it's I have to focus on that. <laughs> and if I have to focus on some patterns, that's really not good for the live streaming. For example, I'm talking to the camera while reading the comments in my second language and then stitching, right? So my mind is not here at all. I have no, you know, I cannot focus on that at all. And as much as I say that I, there's no rules or there's no right and wrong in Sashiko, I do not like making mistakes neither. So it, it is not that complicated. Most of all the patterns of um, geometric patterns for Sashiko can be explained with the grid, a graph paper. So if you kind of study that a little bit, play with it, you will probably find a way to go through that. Uh, thank you, Janet. Quite honestly, I just enjoy listening to your thoughts as I need. That's exactly what I want. So please bring your stuff here. It doesn't have to be sashiko, it can be anything. It can be knitting, it can be crochet, it can be zigzag puzzles. Anything is fine, but just something. Let's do something together. And that's what I want to make as the place to be. Uh, there's a word for the Japanese, it's called ibasho. And that's what I want to make. Somewhere that I can... Ideally, I want to make it periodic. Like, let's say every Friday around this time that I can do this. Um, anyhow, it is nice to have a place to sort of share the same passion or interest. I mean, if you do long enough knitting, crochet, any crafting, you probably don't have to spend a lot of energy on this hand here. You don't have to properly focus on that. The same time as both of the hands will be occupied. So it is good to have kind of conversation partner or even like listening to someone. And that's the, the reason that I am doing this. So that'd be great. Please bring like you know bring some drinks. I live in the US right now, so this is the night time for me. So anyone who lives in the US or the northern part of the US, northern part of no, not a northern, the, come on, east, not the east side, the American, what do you call that American continent? You know, north and central and south America area, bring some drinks and let's have fun together. And I will talk about Boro in, let's say, a minute or so. But I did not get any questions specifically for Boro, so good, good. Okay, let me prepare that. I don't think I can stitch and talk about Boro simultaneously, so.
All right, there we go. Where am I now? There we go. All right. I wish I really have those kind of studio kind of setting, but it's two cameras on my walking area, which doesn't really do a good job. So I hope I can. I, I, I hope you can hear me now. So Boro, let's talk about Boro. B O R O. And this is the background you're seeing right now. This is the kind of Boro that we are making right now. Um, in English, as long as I know, as long as I know, is in English it is translated as the piece with a lot of damage, the fabric pieces with a lot of damage, torns or holes, and as the result of mending, um, the piece becomes boro. And in English, <laughs> in English, people use that word boro to explain the technique how to make these pieces. Um, this one is more like the uh, kind of massive stitching, but probably what you can see online is like this kind of kind of patchworks with a lot of stitching. And those interpret those translation, those explanation is not wrong. The borrow is um, mending. Sometimes people say visible mending to recycle the fabric. Um, that is not wrong, but at the same time, it is very much missing um, a lot of core um, important essence of Boro. Uh, fully appreciate Boro, and that's not nobody's fault. It is very difficult for non Japanese people to understand it if they do not speak Japanese or if they do not live in Japan. Um, it is very difficult to translate it. Uh, one has to know very fluently in both languages as well as the culture. I can only explain that because I moved to the US and I this is my 10th? No. Well, including my university times, including my college years, it is my 10th year. So finally finally i can explain a little bit of that and uh, today i will try to talk about <laughs> i will try to talk about that what i can explain and the more by repeating this process i would like to offer the webinar one day about what is the borrow and today's live streaming about stitching and borrow together Okay, so since I said that it's borrow in English is not wrong but insufficient, not, not enough, your question is very valid that what is missing then? I will go through that a little bit, little by little. Uh, before that, I would like to answer Janet's question. Uh, the question from Janet, do you feel that when you stitch that you have to look at what you are doing while continuing to stitch? The reason I ask is because knitting for me is second nature and I can look elsewhere and talk. Um, I do not... It depends on the pattern for that. If I am stitching on the easy patterns, like the common pattern you see me stitching on the live streaming a lot, I really don't have to look at um, what I'm doing. like. In between the hands, I do not have to look at it. I just have to make sure that I'm following the line that I prepare. It's like driving. I do not pay attention to steer the wheels, or I do not really pay attention to the pressing the gas. But I have to make sure that I'm going the right direction. I'm not going to somebody's house. So I cannot. I cannot omit one of the hand, and I cannot do it by one hand, but I don't have to look at it. I can watch TV, I can watch, I can listen to anything for that matter. I can talk, I can watch TVs, I can talk to somebody. I don't think I can cook though. I don't think I should drive while stitching. But besides that, I can do pretty much 
a lot of things, but it depends on the patterns. When I do the Bishamon Kiko pattern like that, it requires a little bit of attention, caring. <laughs> caring, yes, I have to care, I have to pay attention to that, and as the result, I will probably talk less, and it's not probably ideal for the sashi called live streaming. I don't mind stitching without any speaking, but that's probably not ideal. But th this one I this one I did like shippo pattern. I don't have to really look at the uh, circle. Another question, thank you. How do you feel about the capital brand utilizing Boro into the mainstream? Um, I am a kind of big fan of capital. I do not want to buy it from them because I can make it. But I respect that brand. Some people kind of misunderstand my message that I do not like those commercialized, commercialized or like I am. I, I never say that nobody should make money out of sashiko boro. If they can make it, um, they should make it. And I sometimes collaborate. We sometimes collaborate with the bigger brand as well. So there's nothing wrong with making. Um, just like making money out of it. And Capital is doing a great job. At the same time, I think. As long as I know, as long as I know, they use very good. Japanese vintage fabric. We sometimes like sometimes work with the dealers who also has a business with the capital. Some of the vintage fabric I get from Japan is also those fabric that the capital use. Um, I mean, I wish they would share more stories if they can, but at the same time. It's There's no problem for me to see. But they, they're pretty cool. And they're, you know, million times better in marketing. <laughs> in, if I compare myself to them, they're, you know, million times better in marketing and production because I don't, we are focusing on the cultural perspective and we're pretty st strict for that too. We were, by the way, I'm sorry. We were strict about it, so. If I wish something they I wanted I w wish they would share more stories, but at the same times that's probably what I have to do. So I don't have any problem with that. Boro boro demo uh, I will, I mean, 日本語、日本語1時間ぐらいにまたやりますね The Japanese comment was that um, the kind of attractions of the Japanese borrow in the English So I will talk about what is missing in the what is missing in the borrow in English Sashiko, uh, we have to define word first to make sure that we can go forward, uh, but it is not my intention to define word without explaining the cultural context. For that, I will try to force myself to define two words so we can talk on the same stage. So, sashiko and boro are not the word for any patterns, technique, or styles. I will repeat. Sashiko or Boro are not the word for the specific patterns or techniques or styles. Um, then what is it? The definition is that Sashiko is a form of hand stitching. That's it. That Sashiko is a form of hand stitching developed in Japan. And then Boro is the result of the Sashiko stitching. One result of Sashiko stitching. Sashiko is a form of hand stitching, and then Boro is the one of the result of repeti repetition of Sashiko stitching. Um, 
when we define the two words like that, it's not sashiko versus boro, or which one is the sashiko technique and one is the boro technique. It's this pretty much sashiko, and then it becomes boro. But unfortunately, right now, probably people misunderstanding those two words as the technique to compare each other. That's not. And then we have to kind of dig a little bit deeper. How come? Why did we make boro? Did we, the Japanese, make boro in a few hundred years ago? Sashiko itself was developed as the form of hand stitching to make the fabric stronger and warmer, thicker, more beautiful for that matter as well. But that was the stitching to make the fabric stronger for their survival, for their life, for their orderly days. Um, it's like something we had to do, yet some people probably enjoyed it, some people probably didn't enjoy it. It's like washing the dishes or cooking. Some people like love cooking for the family, some people probably don't like cooking for the anybody or anything, so they eat out. So it was not a, a choice much. And that ordinarily, without choice, is kind of a missing part of the borrow in English. It is true that whatever fabric can be used for borrow, but at the same time, whatever is a little bit of too much choice for... It is from the perspective of somebody who can choose. Um, romanticizing the word borrow to be art is okay as long as they understand the people or even emotions that Japanese people carried when they had to make boro. Um, showing the patches was not their choice. Probably. Could be wrong, but if you had if we had to stitch on something to hide the hole or torn, do we want to show that? Right now because the sustainability is the key theme of our life, we can share, show off. I don't want to say show off, but we can show off the cares we can do on the pants. But if they did not worry about those sustainability back then for the environment, they probably did not want to show those mending. And that's the missing part of borrow. Um, that leads to the um, some of the impressions in borrow. For example, none of my artisans who I grew up with loved borrow. None of them. So did I. I did not like them at all. It's recent that I became serious about borrow. And there was a nice museum. Ah, there was a beautiful museum in Tokyo, and they displayed the beautiful borrows back then there. But if I ask my Japanese friend if they would like to bring one of those borrows back to home, pretty much everybody said that they did not want to. It's some like it's kind of scary for that matter. It's too much stories, too much, too much to carry it in my own private space. So it's it's beautiful. But I did not find that fun fact there. Of course it's the you know it's the crystallization of fun not of fun, I'm sorry, crystallization of the caring. Um, one had to stitch for caring somebody else. So it is, of course, a one cultural result of humans' activities, but it is not always fun. And sometimes the Western culture, especially the American culture, of niceness, being nice to everybody, being comfortable to everybody, is erasing those shameful, the concept of shame off from the 
for stitching. So let's go back to the this borrow. Uh, this is the borrow I'm trying to make. In order to make borrow, there's one essential part which is not stitching, which is using it. Once we make borrow, we have to use it. And then if you use it, you have to keep stitching that. Keep using it, stitching it, keep stitching, using. Those cycle will make borrow at some point, but that's not the end of the cycle. So, <laughs> It, it is so funny to say that because my mask, Sashiko mask, is now displayed, exhibit, exhibited in the glass case. But Boro in the glass case is one picture of Boro, but that's not the whole because I think in the real Boro, it should be worn, it should be used, it should be in the orderly life. So it is okay to romanticize it, it is okay to make money out of it, it is okay to, you know, market it. it, it it's better than completely ignored, Co it's better than completely buried in history. So it is good that they have attention, at the same time, I do not want them to ignore the, how Japanese people would have thought about it, and also how we think, even contemporary people right now, would think about Boro when they hear that word. It's not a positive word. It's not the... It's not a pleasant word. But sometimes the word can define the word themselves and it can have a different meaning. And that's something I would like to kind of try to avoid that. Uh, for, from the Janet, it reminds me of my... Ah, sorry. Ah, ah. It reminds me of a story my friend told me about how her mother made her clothing and she was ashamed, though it was well made. It was from a mindset of saving money or being poor. Yes, and I am, you know, talking about borrow like this as if I know the everything. I, I'm the master of borrow. I am not. And there's nothing special about borrow. Um, the similar practice existed pretty much every single culture, as Janet mentioned. And the biggest difference between those practice and the borrow is that we have the name for that. And there are many such good artisans who can make borrow like us still exist in 2021. Therefore, um, and you know, the Japanese word can be pretty flashy I don't know if that's the good word but Japanese word can be very efficient in terms of selling or in terms of getting popularity so that kind of mixed them up and then it became the word but the concept wise in the very very core concept it is exactly the same as those people who had to stitch because they needed to save money they didn't have any materials uh, it's the sign of poverty, not a poor, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't want to say poverty because that's the value def defined by us, we can choose. So, it's not a poverty, it's more like the financially difficult. It's the stitching happened in the difficult, in the challenge, challenging condition with limited resources. There we go. So, <laughs> my, I don't... I don't remember if I explained this, but I married to the um, Jewish lady who was born in the USSR. And, you know, USSR back then, they didn't have much stuff. So my parents-in-law, who lives in who live in Israel right now, they did not have a lot of stuff. They are, they, they are not wealthy enough, but when my wife was a child, they did not have enough. And the, the, my parents-in-law, they did pretty much everything to 
you know, provide to her. So for them, what I do is completely doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, I wear the patched denim. I used to wear the patched denim, like, you know, the, the capital cells. And my parents-in-law cried for me that her, their daughter treat me so horribly that I have to patch my denim by myself. I tried to explain that that's what I do for a living, but they didn't understand it because they are the people who tried their best to get out of that, and they did. So did the Japanese. Uh, that's why none of my artisans really were not proud of making boro. But we do, we do. I do enjoy it, my mother enjoys it, and now I really want to expand this, why it is amusing us somehow uh, if this is the sign of shame it is sign of the embarrassment it, it is if it, if this is the sign of difficult time why do we enjoy that right now um, I think it is because it carries the stories it carries a lot of stories and then we can talk to those who do not exist anymore via fabric and I think that's the power of Boro including those Japanese spiritual spiel, speed, uh, spirituality such as animism by the way my face is super bright what's going on I didn't know really <laughs> Hey, hey, well, I will fix it sometimes later. But there's nothing wrong with people patching the colorful stuff and then make one bag and then call it boro. There's nothing wrong with it. I do not like them, but there's nothing wrong with, with it. But that's not the boro. And If they decided to ignore the stories from origin, then it's gonna be an issue. If they try to learn, that there's no problem with that. But if they try to ignore, that's that's probably the word for that. Then it's gonna be a problem. Not a problem. It, it's sad. It's really sad. So I'll go back to the actual explanation of Boro a little bit. It's really difficult to have myself on the camera and talk about Boro. Just a second. So if you can look at this one, there are many, many, many layers of fabric. Once we use, once we stitch it, then we have to use. When we use it, it's gonna be another damage on top of it. Uh, so it's gonna be a repetition of those. Use it and then stitch it. Use and stitch it. Uh, this is the result of probably more than hundred times of stitching everywhere. So we can probably call it authentic borrow because we have been trying to use it as much as we can. And we stitch a lot, we really stitch a lot. So this can be sort of authentic that we can find in the museum piece. Uh, it doesn't smell because I can wash it. <laughs> it it's clean, it's really clean. Uh, I wouldn't lick it, but it's clean. And this is something I was, I am working on it this, this year to make the authentic bore from scratch. So, the borrow in English right now is this one, probably. They find a piece of beautiful patches, I'm sorry, the beautiful swatches, and they patch together, they make one piece of something, and then they call it borrow. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's one thing missing, using it. So this is not the borrow for me. This is just merely the patchworking, or mending for that matter. 
but by using it the fabric will start getting those holes a little bit and then at some point I have to fix it because it's going to come off very badly by using that by keep using it this will become like this over I don't I don't know how many years it's gonna take but by me using it every day as the scarf and then washing it whenever it kind of start getting dirty then it might look like this hopefully one day but this green fabric is already very weak so I have to fix it I have to strengthen it by patching another fabric so it is I believe it is very possible to do that it's just a matter of time and uh, this is not the end of the world this is just the beginning of borrow and that's something I would like to share in the English community about borrow that th their understanding is not wrong uh, it's the Western mindset to define what is right and what is wrong from the first discussion uh, there's no such a thing as right and wrong for that but something is missing and I'm here to explain that as well I think I explained what I what the borrow is and I have to summarize this I will watch this live streaming again and again and then I will summarize it and I can I hope I can make the webinar one day but since the borrow is the Japanese word I do not want it to lose the sense of Japaneseness uh, many Japanese people how can I say they do not hate borrow but they do not really admire borrow much <laughs> I mean they they know they understand the beauty of it but many people as long as I know many people who do sashiko share the same feeling that they do not want to bring it back home I think that's because they stitch as well uh, my friends who can like who I can talk about those sashiko and boro they are they are all stitch they all do the sashiko stitching with us so they know how much of the energy not energy how much of the care not a care it is caring and it, it is energy but it's a little more than that um, we put a lot of energy and we put a lot of caring into stitching at the same time we put a lot of stories in it like today I am stitching while talking about borrow and that's one record on this fabric and with the stitching a lot it's gonna be uh, layers of personal stories and it is beautiful if it's from my family but if it's done by unknown people a little bit creepy for them and that's why I do not want to have the piece of borrow from somebody uh, especially those who I cannot wash it I wash the vintage fabric no matter where I get it from uh, that, that's must must things that I have to do whenever I get a um, vintage fabric I wash it washing it and then trying to get rid of those spirit <laughs> on top of dust and also you know the dust and debris I would like to rinse those spirits off as much as I can but borrow pieces are too strong to rinse it even if we wash it so I have to add more stitches so that I can kind of re resonate not a repaint not replace resonate the spirit of that borrow it has <laughs> I'm not talking something spiritual then something spiritual but that's how I feel about it and 
I do not feel that the borrow current trend of borrow is following that. I guess. Okay, um, that was about 20 minutes. That's exactly the minutes I was hoping to make it happen. Is there anything that I can answer about Boro? I cannot promise I will answer everything, but can you hear? Um, interesting. How would you wash your delicate piece? That's a very good question. Um, you may surprise, but I put it into the laundry, like washing machine. I mean, not the sashiko stitching I make, I do not do it, but if I buy it from somewhere, I wash it in the... Well, it really depends, but I sometimes wash it in the laundry, like washing machine, because if the purpose of that vintage fabric is to be used in those mending, if the fabric gets damaged by just washing it, that's not a good enough fabric to even stitch with. So I have to test that test that fabric if it's okay to stitch on. So I really do not do extra care when I get a vintage fabric. Uh, when I get those, this borrow I'm not gonna put into the dishwasher, not a dishwasher, washing machine because I know it's gonna be very fragile, so I wash with hand. But first, we wash it in the pretty strict way, rough way, because if the fabric is not strong enough, that doesn't serve the purpose after all. At the same time, it's kind of risky as well because, you know, vintage fabric became, uh, vintage fabric became extremely expensive, 10,000 times more expensive. You know, like I cannot imagine how expensive it became, but one day my mother was washing the vintage fabric. It was very heavy, and we thought that was a very good cotton. In reality, it was the kind of rain jacket in probably a few hundred years ago that they had a paper dyed by kakishibu, which is the prismon tanning which is the kind of water repellent, water repellent paper in between those two fabrics. Uh, when we washed that, those, the fabric melted. It is water repellent, but it's not a water resistant. So it could, it's a paper, so it, it kind of melted in the water. And then that lo lost a lot of weight, which means a lot of kind of value for that. Because sometimes we pay based on the weight. The price can be made, um, the size of the vintage fabric can be also the uh, standard of pricing, but also the weight is another factor to uh, price the vintage fabric, and she paid for that weight, so everything is, you know, learning process for that. <laughs> uh, the, the washing itself is not always the best answer, but at the same time, if we cannot wash the vintage fabric, then we cannot, at least I do not want to use it for my borrow because then I have to make sure that I, it's, it becomes too fragile. If I cannot wash it in the laundry washing machine, I probably will not stitch much. Whew. That's the probably that's a very good point, Janet. Um, if the result, if the purpose of borrow making is the art, if they want to make the beautiful, colorful patchworking, which I sometimes don't like, 
uh, as the result and they want to frame it and then hang it then of course you have to care about how to um, how to take care of the vintage fabric we get from Japan and we have to be careful to not to wash it off and break it but that's already not the exact borrow it's already the um, filtered borrow so oh this is some like analogy I always use and I wanna I would like to make sure that I share this analogy uh, I keep saying that what is borrowed and what is not borrowed today and I, I'm trying to explain the missing part of borrow in English uh, the, at the same time I think you know anybody can do anything about borrow and I'm not gonna be you know, offended as long as they do want to or they do care about the Japanese culture behind it but there's one taboo that I do not want you to do it as a summary you can do pretty much anything <laughs> as much as I talk this much I encourage you to try borrow bo making borrow stitching again sashiko is a form of stitching and then borrow is the result so the more you do sashiko the more this piece becomes borrow if you keep using it and mending it so doing sashiko is equal to making borrow in the long term but there's one thing and the, <laughs> sorry then, then i keep saying that there's no rules in sashiko so there's no rules in borrow right yeah sashiko is the form of stitching and borrow is the result so any sashiko stitching can be a role to the borrow if they keep stitching and using it and since there's no rules in sashiko and there's there shouldn't be any rules in borrow there we go that's very logical <laughs> but there's one thing i do not like sometimes mm, it's probably taboo cultural taboo that is using borrow under the food uh, that's very bad <laughs> I think I that was probably in pin interest or somewhere else um, I saw a photo of sort of the borrow pieces under the fancy dinner setting and for those with a lot of good caring mindset um, probably bore represent the caring as for the sustainability so they thought that you know the classy dinner can be a good association with the borrow and I understand their mind if that's the case but borrow under the food is just disgusting <laughs> borrow is something we wear or we use to clean uh, the jacket to cover our skin from the sunlight observe the sweat uh, scarf to protect my neck sometimes wipe my sweat wipe my hand uh, clothes to wipe things um, some of the famous borrow is like a women's rag for the birth so they you know pretty much observe all the liquid and then they wash it fix it use it fix it wash it the, 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 the repetition and we kind of know that the Japanese people know how boro was made and the sound of boro implies some of the dirty things not the positive thing dirty dirtiness so it is very scary to see the borrow under the food d, d, food uh, like rice <laughs> I cannot I, I could not do the rice in the bowl on the borrow piece but that's some people may say that it's okay because it's in the bowl it's not touching the bowl directly bread is even worse because it could be touching the borrow directly I mean it does not matter 
how clean this bottle is. This is the cleanest bottle because I keep washing it. I can smell it. I wouldn't taste it, but even if I taste it, there's probably a taste of the um, detergent. So it's not dirty at all. It's as clean as the other uh, tablecloth. But there's a little bit of mind blocking it. And the analogy I use is that so when you go to, let's say you decided to go to the second-hand store, like a recycling store. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, yeah, you decided to go to the recycling store, recycling, recycling store, like, you know, Goodwill or something like that. And then there was a group of tourists or group of people from foreign countries visiting the Goodwill. And then Goodwill was selling the completely beautiful toilet second hand it says second hand and but it's bleached 100 percent it's sanitized it's crystal clean like you know new one but if those foreign foreigners decided to use that toilet as the soup bowl would you enjoy that would you try that soup in the toilet? Again, they 100% sanitize it. There's no germs. There's nothing. It's crystal clean. Yet we kind of have a mental barrier that the toilet is not for that. But if they don't, if they don't know about it, if they, if we do not know about what toilet is for, it can be used for something else. But we have those cultural barriers. And that's what boro under the food is like. There's nothing wrong, but it's just so wrong. <laughs> it's not even disrespectful. See, like, I would, like, thank you so much, Sherry. I would not put my plate on a pair of used socks even if it was just washed. That's... I don't think this is something, this is unique things. It's, it's just the lack of knowing what's going on. If the borough was the recycle of... Some people really do not care about those words. I mean, borough is cool. Boro sells a lot of stuff, so let's use it. And that's kind of the end of their interest. Um, there was a... There was a... It's surprising. There was a person who was saying that the origin of Sashiko was in the Edo period, which is kind of not true, because we do not have the documents for that. I believe that there were people before the Edo period who were stitching, but we just didn't call it Sashiko. So I... The Wikipedia says that it's in the Edo period. So I asked him, like, if you kind of declare that as if that is the truth, can you share the you know, resources? It can be Wikipedia or anywhere. But he, their reply was that they do not want to, they do not engage in any opinion exchange over the internet. And I explained that I am the professional, I am you know, making my life in the Sashiko, but they, that was probably he, um, he disengaged my question as personal opinion, and that's how Western world can be, because the English is a very strong word, strong language, which has the power to repaint all of the cultural stuff. So I just want you and anybody who can care about those cultural contexts to know a little more. <laughs> so like, it's, it's the exact, I have to stop it because the Japanese one is going to start soon, but it was, it was sure. it's the exaggeration. It's the exaggeration. The toilet, drinking, having a soup from the toilet bowl is the exaggeration of the analogy. But let's like, like it's, it's really funny for that matter. Let's in hundred years from now, 
the American people, like, you know, my daughter, they invented some of the beautiful, innovative toilet that they don't have to use the toilet bowls that we use anymore. So the toilet, you know, toilet, toilet that has the water inside, maybe, maybe something from the past. 100 years from now, 200 years from now, they might not see those toilet. Only in the photos. And outside of the world, for some reason, that toilet became a trend. And they stood using it as the utensil, or even plate. It's the exaggeration of what's going on in Boro, but that's kind of not exaggeration, especially when I see the boro under the food. I mean, it's okay to wear the boro because that's how they were supposed to, and it's not dirty. It's not dirty at all, but at the same time, there's a little bit of mental barrier. Sorry. All right, so <laughs> I will stop it today. It was a very good one hour. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will come back with this the same topic. I will probably repeat the same story. I might speak about something else, but the Boro and Sashikos are the stories that I would like to share, and then one day when I collect those information as the webinar. Um, please keep watching some of the videos I make on this YouTube channel. Uh, the live streaming is good to learn how to stitch because you can pretty much see what I'm doing right now. Uh, you can learn a lot from that. And I do have some tutorials as well. Uh, and if you are interested in learning in the shortcut, if you need personal attention to get it within a few days or a few weeks, please consider my online Sashiko class. You'll get a personal attention to get everything you need. Okay. I think it makes sense, and I will see you. See you next time. Have a nice night for those who live in the U.S. and East Side. Bye bye. After the